Hi, uh, we're going to go over art as event, and then I'm going to give you today um, in the assignment the uh, first part of your final project. Um, we are in week 12 out of 14 weeks, so uh, approaching the end here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go over art as event. There's some videos for you to watch today. Uh, this is Andy Warhol, and he was the pop artist um, that did. There we go. The uh, soup, the Campbell soup cans that you've seen. Remember, pop art is taken from popular art, so things that uh, everyday items, so uh, like a soup can, and then he had the had them all lined up like like this, uh, kind of showing how you know marketing how each soup can is the same. Um, uh, he, uh, in terms of event, he worked in a place called the factory from 1962 to 1984. And it was uh, a, a hangout. It was his art studio. Um, it also, there was a house band, the Velvet Underground were their house band. And uh, one of the things that, uh, there were parties there, events, <laughs> under art as event. Uh, there were people who were people who lived on the streets who would come to his parties, and then there were celebrities who would come to his parties. So it was an uh, unusual mixture of people that were attracted uh, to him. He, uh, people would like party pretty hard at these, but it, uh, Andy Warhol was known for um, not uh, partaking of uh, alcohol or drugs very much. So here's some pictures. He had uh, somebody that he knew um, in the video, you'll see, when you click on these, you'll see there's a video of uh, talking about how this uh, came to be. And one of the things is he had seen this room that was covered in silver foil. So he asked him to cover it. So it was the factory, it's called the factory or the silver factory. So you can see one of those parties going on. And like this is all in uh, downtown New York. So in a, like a loft kind of situation. So here he is, um, uh, it, Bob Dylan, probably most of you have heard of Bob Dylan. Uh, he's a well-known uh, musical artist. And uh, here he is visiting Andy Warhol in the factory. Andy is also really uh, fascinated by celebrity. So you also notice this is Elizabeth Taylor. He would do, here's an early picture of Marilyn Monroe. And this one, if you click on this, you'll see there's a video. Um, this is Farrah Fawcett Majors and she was really well known, probably back in maybe like the seventies, I think. Um, she was uh, like top selling, um, pinup poster, and um, she was one of the originals, Charlie's Angels. I think I think there was a remake you might have known, but it was a TV series uh, back then, and she was uh, super popular. So he, she, in this video, she comes to the studio, and they do a portrait of her. So you can see where they take the photograph, and then he. Uh, adds paints into the photograph and you'll, you'll watch it on there. So take a look, there's a video about the factory and then there's a video about um, uh, him with Farrah Fawcett um, that are embedded. So we have to go back into the PowerPoint and then they're embedded in there. And you can uh, take a look at those. This next artist is Tino Siegel and maybe Seagal Siegel. Um, The uh, performance artist, a lot of event is performance art. Performance art is somewhere between, uh, it's art, but it's almost like acting or drama, but it's not really in the format like a play would be. It's usually uh, set in a different kind of setting. Um, and he does uh, constructed situations. He has a dance background. And he will like to set up um, people that uh, he uses as actors to uh, put things on. So this um, 
So this is in the Guggenheim Museum looking down on the main entry. And I don't know if you can tell from this photo, but there's uh, people kissing. Here's people walking in around the museum, but uh, here's a couple laying on the floor kissing. And what Tina Segal uh, worked from is in art, there's a tradition of uh, people kissing. <laughs> it's called the kiss. Here's two more famous pieces, uh, Gustav Klimt on the right um, of people kissing, traditional paintings. So he decided to actually have people kissing. So they're right in the entryway. Uh, the Guggenheim is in downtown Manhattan. So people are coming in to see art exhibits and then here are these people uh, in real life kissing. And some people stop and watch them. Some people just kind of try to step over them. You'll see there's a video uh, if you click on one of these um, and it shows, uh, shows them uh, like in this performance, they don't really talk or anything, but it's just them. Here's another one that he did. Uh, click on this one. It's, you know, it's almost like a flash dance where all these people, this is at Turban Hall in England that we have seen many, uh, uh, many pieces of artwork in. And <clears throat> he, uh, it was uh, a mixture of people visiting Turban Hall. And then he had these people in a kind of like a flash mob. So all of a sudden at one point, I think they start walking backwards and chanting and this goes on for a while. And then at another point, they just stop and go back to being like normal art patrons again. So that's in this video. So that's another performance that he uh, did. This is another performance, uh, performance artist. Her name is Marina Abramovic and she is in your book. And um, uh, I think in the book, they talk about a piece she did called The Artist is Present, which I think is the next slide. And um, she uh, is kind of like Chris Burden in a way where she will push limits. Um, she would push limits for how far, uh, you know, put herself in almost like danger almost at times or really uncomfortable situations and uh, kind of just push the limits. Um, She's called the grandmother of performance art. Uh, she's probably, like now she's probably in her late 60s, I think. Most of these things she did, uh, she still does, uh, I think, performance art. But um, when she was younger, she had uh, a partner and they, they did it together. They separated. There is, let's see here, yeah, here she is. This is called The Artist is Present. And uh, this was in a museum in New York. And, she would sit there all day and be with the people that came and sat with her. She did this for over several weeks. And um, uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you, you, when you, there's a whole, there is a, if you're interested in this type of artwork in the SMC library, they have a video called The Artist is Present about her. And they talk about this particular piece, but also some of her other pieces that were um, really out there at the time. And uh, it talks about her history. She's really a fascinating woman. And uh, like I said, uh, they, I think they talk more about this piece in your textbook. So I definitely, my dog says hi. Definitely, um, actually she's barking at the people across the street doing yard work, but um, anyway, hopefully, yeah, okay, I guess she's losing interest. But anyway, um, so yeah, it's, it's in the book. And also, yeah, you can check out that video too if you wanna find out more about her. Um, this is um, uh, two Swiss artists. Peter Fischel and David Weiss, and they make these videos. There's a word for this. Oh, what is it? Where you know where you line things up, and then each one knocks into the next one. Sometimes you'll see see videos of like people with, you know, like dominoes or different things, and then each action causes the next action. Well, these guys are really like amazing at it. And you can see they have these videos of in like a warehouse. There is some in here, uh, in one of these, you'll click it. Take a look at the video. Uh, they will set things on fire and then that will burn something that then will create like the next thing. 
and then you know like this set this off with steam you know uh, it, it they're really fun to watch and it's pretty amazing you know when you look at them everything goes smoothly but you just wonder how many times did they do this where one thing didn't catch on fire or push the other thing or blow the other thing away because <laughs> they're all like keep like this one you know like the tire has to roll just right to hit that next object to stop keep the next thing in action so um you know what if the tire doesn't make it <laughs> i guess they have to start over again anyway take a look at those videos yeah here's one right here we hit that all right this next artist um, I'm really, I love this artist. Uh, he's a Chinese artist, Sai, I'm not, I don't know if I can speak Chinese very well, but his name is Sai Kuang. I think that's how you say it. And he is a fireworks artist and um, he does fireworks and he also does paintings with um, gunpowder. And he also does installation pieces too. Um, I've included a video about him I've, actually, there's two videos. One um, is a video that shows him um, working on the, uh, the gunpowder pieces where he actually uses gunpowder to paint with, paint images with, or I don't know if you call it painting, uh, burning, I guess, burning images into the, into the board. And then uh, also it shows some of his other pieces that he's done. But uh, then I also included uh, a trailer from a movie. The movie is on Netflix if you want to see it. And um, it's called Sky Ladder. And uh, like I said, he's a fireworks artist. And he, his grandmother um, was, I think, like in hospice or very close to die, you know, dying. She was old, older. And uh, he told, you know, he loved her and he told her that he wanted to make a ladder from earth to heaven so they could visit each other. So he made this um, fireworks that was like to look like a ladder and it was really tall. It was, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the exact uh, one, but I think it'll, it will say in the, in the, in the tra uh, trailer, uh, there's a trailer to the movie. The movie you can watch if you have Netflix and at least in the trailer, you get a feeling for uh, what the movie's about. And so he uh, has this really tall ladder and um, this is in China. So uh, you need to have firework permits before you can uh, shoot off fireworks. So he got the firework permits uh, to do this for his grandmother and he's hoping to get it done before she passes. He wants her to see it. And then the weather <clears throat> didn't cooperate because what he was doing was pushing the limits to even make this happen and the weather needed to be perfect. So he uh, got another permit and then it, the weather did cooperate again. So then, um, like I said, he's worried about his grandmother passing and, and one day the weather was uh, perfect for it. So he went ahead and uh, shot this off without the proper permits and which in China, I believe could, uh, be pretty bad for him. Um, so he left the country for a while right after it, but he did accomplish it. And uh, his grandmother was too ill to be there, but he showed her a video of it uh, and did that in her honor. So it's a, that's what the movie's about <clears throat> and about him. Here's one of his fireworks. Uh, some, he does daytime fireworks too, which is a little different and uh, nighttime and daytime fireworks. And here is, it's meant to be like, I think uh, flowers, like you can see the stems of the flowers. It's on a barge shot out in the water. Here's one of those panels that I said that he makes with um, gunpowder. Here's one of the daytime fireworks. Um, they talk about him in your book too. I think this is in Israel. So he does these all over the world. Here's another daytime fireworks. Like a, looks like an abstract painting out of fireworks. So that's a barge. You can see how huge this is. This one's in your book. Here's another daytime firework. So definitely check out his videos because he's amazing. Um, 
And this is our, oh wait, I don't know if it's our last, I think we have one more artist, but this is um, uh, Rob, maybe, I think this is our last one, Robin Road. He's from Johannesburg, Africa. And he, uh, this is meant to look like he's playing basketball, right? But it's actually, he's laying on uh, some kind of concrete or asphalt and these are drawn with chalk and then he enacts it like he's making this jump shot. Here he is uh, waving a flag, but it's really bricks and he's really laying down again. And here's a series of him catching things falling from the sky. So he catches a television and then he catches a chair and the table. And then he catches a car. <laughs> Here he is working with some other kids. So they're laying there like they're being spun around on their toy that they don't really have. And the last one is uh, him playing music. Not really. So take a look, there's a video about him too. So please watch that. That's uh, posted on uh, Moodle, but it's also, I think, uh, embedded. So uh, when you go, just you know, to remind you, I know I told you many times, but uh, some of the videos are embedded. You just double click on, on the images and they'll pop up as you go along. So that means you have to reopen the PowerPoint to do that. So, um, now let's move on to uh, your assignment. <clears throat> let's see. Let's go good. So I haven't opened these yet, but here is your artist event names. Um, here's the video about the sky ladder, the trailer. Here's the one about him and the fireworks. Here's the Robin Road video. And now we're going to uh, come back. This is, we'll come back to this. Uh, here's your assignment. So what you're gonna do, I'll go over it uh, more next week, the whole assignment, but uh, I'll give you the details of it. But what you're gonna do is do a final exhibition and you know how we've had themes for each of these different chapters in the book? Well, you're gonna pick a theme and then you're gonna go back through the artwork that we've looked at this semester and you're gonna find um, artworks that will um, represent your theme. So we're gonna start off with you developing the theme. So this is the first part that I want you to do before you start the final. So. You're going to do this, uh, pick out your theme, show me some examples, and turn that in. And then um, let me just make sure it's OK. One of the things that uh, you are not to do is use one of the chapters in the book. So uh, you know, if you want to, if you do art as a vet, that's not going to uh, make it. But then you, you know, have to think maybe there's something friendly to that you could pick. So like say you wanted to do art as a vent, um, maybe you like it that there's other people interacting with the artist. So, you know, your theme might be interactive art, art that has other people interact with it. You know, like for example, those tubes that people were sliding down in the beginning, right? That was, the artist made the sculpture, but the people uh, participated with it to, uh, make it happen or that artist that um, had all the lines drawn on the wall for people's height, like it was his concept, and, but he couldn't have done it without people interacting. So that would be a possible theme that might you know, be friendly to a vet. So if there's a theme, like say you wanted to pick art as humor or art as confrontation, um, you know, you can't do that, but you might, you know, you might be, you could pick art that's depressing or art uh, about mental issues, or um, uh, you could put, um, what was the other one I just said, confrontation or 
anyway yeah there's there, oh humor yeah like so you couldn't do art as a joke but you might you know find you know maybe silly art art that's silly um something like that so let's go ahead and read this for the last three weeks we have been discussing and organizing artists from various disciplines based on themes from the book now it's your turn to start curating artworks based on the theme of your design Final for this class will be a 20 artist fictional exhibition with a theme of your choice. In this writing assignment, you will choose an exhibition theme. To help you select a theme, think about several artists from the book and class lectures so far that you are drawn to. You take issue with, made you think, et cetera, and consider what about their work stands out to you. Do they have similar interests, functions, uh, aesthetic concerns or sensibilities. Also review the list of themes from the past uh, students for ideas. Formulate a theme proposal and complete for the writing prompt below for this week's writing, uh, complete the writing prompt for this week's writing project. So share the theme you're putting together and how you formed your exhibition idea. List the artists from the book or class lecture so far that you intend to use in your exhibition and describe how each of them works into the theme. Look for uh, my comments regarding your theme and uh, reply if necessary. So do that before you, I want you to turn this assignment in before you uh, start your final next week. Um, so it's 200 word minimum for this. So let's see, I'm gonna show you, let's go back. Two. All right, here's some um, suggestions in here. So you can use these or you might give you an idea for something. These are some that people have done in the past. So interactive, one I was just talking about. Um, so yeah, like uh, when I was mentioning confrontation, art is rebellion could be one, um, energetic, Arts that outside the museum, awkward art, art with dark messages, um, art that's extreme, art that explores psychological issues, art that's creepy, art is protest, uh, bold. There's another page here. Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, so those are some examples of um, some, some themes that people have used, but you come up with your own. So, you know, and, uh, you know, have it be, you know, something that you want to work with, pick something that you, that interests you, uh, because, you know, it's, you're going to be picking out 20 hours eventually. So for this assignment, you're just going to do five. So just follow the instructions for that one. And then, uh, you know, if I give you, if I give you a full grade on it, then that means you're fine. And then look and see if I have any comments. Sometimes, uh, sometimes people will pick one that I think maybe, uh, like, even though I say don't use a chapter in the book, somebody always does that. <laughs> and then, uh, so I just want to nip that in the bud because you would not get credit if you used it for your final. And um, also sometimes, sometimes people will pick one that I don't, really think there would be enough artists, uh, artworks to fit that theme. So um, then I maybe would you know, try to help you broaden it, uh, you know, re rephrase it in a way that would work for the assignment. So um, that's it. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving and I will talk to you next Tuesday.